In Onshape, you can create assembly models, which I'm going to do right now. I imported a bunch of parts from Creo Parametric, and I'm going to use them for creating an assembly. When you create a new document, you automatically get an assembly. And I want to point out that there is an origin, but an assembly in Onshape does not have datum planes. You really don't need them here. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in the components that I want to use. Let's click on the insert command and we can select objects from our current document. You can also go to other documents and also standard content. You can see that you have bolts and screws, nuts, pins, studs, etc. And you can choose based on the category, the class of objects that you want to put in there. And I'll do that in another video. I'm just going to add in a bunch of different components. So I will click on the engine block rear and right now I can just drop it in where I want. This circle around a dot, that is the origin of the assembly. So that's good for the first component. Now let's grab the front of the engine block and I'll put that about over here. And I'm just adding them into my assembly right now. And later on, I will reposition them and use what are called mates in order to locate them relative to one another. And let's see, I need the bearing component. I'll just leave it right there for now. And let's grab the cylinder and I'll put it over here. So that's good. I've inserted four components. I'll hit the checklist and you can see them here in the instances list. One thing I want to point out, if you are importing these different components, they'll actually be renamed part one when you bring them in. So you'll definitely want to right click on them and choose rename in order to change them because otherwise you'll just have a bunch of imported parts all called part one listed inside of here. Let's start off with the engine block rear and I'm going to use that as my base component, uh, what I believe Onshape calls the ground. And I'm going to start off by clicking on the component and when I do that, let me click on a surface here, you're going to get what's called the triad manipulator and you have the different arrows for dragging it in various directions and also you can see that you have these circles in here that allow you to rotate the component. And right now, the triad manipulator, let me hit the enter key to, or click to accept that value. When I did that, I initially got the triad manipulator just located on the surface, but I'm going to select on here, and let's see, let's get this. I'm going to grab the triad manipulator, I'm left dragging it, and you'll notice that we get a bunch of different dots, and those are what are called inference points for where the triad manip manipulator is supposed to go, but I'm going to left drag it. I'm going to hover over here. Now I got it right at the center of that cylinder. And now I can right click on the triad manipulator and choose move to origin. So that puts that component at zero, zero, zero. And now I will right click again and then choose the fix command. And there's a little symbol that indicates that the part is fixed. It's on the ground. So that's good for the first component. Now let's take a look at engine block front. I will click on it. And let's see, right now it's not positioned correctly. Let me try rotating it. And that's good. And let's drag it. I'm not repositioning the triad manipulator because I'm just moving it a little more where it should be. I'm not getting it exactly right by any means whatsoever. Now I'm actually going to move it away for adding in my mate connection. So I've repositioned the component. In order to locate it relative to other components in the model, you're going to use what are called mates. And here we have a fastener mate, which will lock things down, so have no degrees of freedom between the two parts. This is what's called a revolute mate, which allows one rotational degree of freedom. Here we have a slider mate, which is one translational degree of freedom. This one is a planar, which has two translational and one rotational. Here we have cylindrical, which is sort of like a revolute with a slider because you get one translational and one rotational. Here we have a pin slot mate. 
and then we have a ball mate, three rotational degrees of freedom. And this is a parallel mate, which gives you, let's see, three translational, one rotational, I believe. I, I forget what it is. Actually, the tool tip should actually tell me if I leave my mouse over it for a second. And yeah, translate for Lee, three translational and one rotational. So those are the different mates that you can use. And in this assembly, I'm going to use a bunch of fastener mates and I'm gonna put in one Revolut mate later on. So for the first one, I want to assemble the engine block front to the engine block rear with that fastener mate. So I'll click on it. You'll notice that the fastener mate appears, you have like a folder of mate features and right now it's in red because I haven't defined the mate connectors between the two parts that are going to be used to locate them. And when I hover over this part, again, it's going to guess where I want the mate connector to go. And you'll notice with the mate connector that it's a triad, essentially it's a coordinate system with three different colored axes. Red is for X. The green is for Y and the blue is for Z. So I'm going to left click here and that is my first mate connector for the engine block. I'm going to rotate and for the other one, I want it over here. That is good. Let me left click and it mates the two components together. This is good and I can hit the check mark and I've got my first uh, component assembled to the other component. Now let's take a look at the cylinder component. So again, I'm going to click on it to get the triad manipulator. I want to make sure I'm using the right terminology. And let's see that I think I need to rotate it about here. Just get it roughly how I want it to be in the model. If not, later on, I can always change the mate. Uh, to the one that I'm supposed to use. And for this one, let's see, I am going to now, let me left click in order to get that, accept that angular value. Let's do another fastener mate. And for this one, I'm going to select, oops, let me get, make sure I get this over here, select that edge and I got it. And I want that to go with this one over here. Oops, did I get it? Let me try again. There we go. And by the way, I was left clicking. I wasn't holding down the control key or anything. So that is good for my second component in here. Let's hit the check mark. And I've got the bearing over here and I need the bearing to go inside the middle of this. And what will help in this situation is if I make some of the components not visible like they are in here. So I can select the components that I do want, the engine block rear, and I'm gonna hold down the control key and select the bearing part. And from the pop-up menu, actually, I'm not sure if I picked it. Let's choose the isolate command from the pop-up. And you'll notice how everything else went faint. And now I can see what I want to use. And here's a little isolate dialog box. When you want to bring everything back, you can close this. Also, you can right-click and hold and choose exit isolate. So for this component, again, we're going to do another fastener mate. And I want to select, let's see, let's select, I want this edge over here. And let's select that edge over there. And yep, that looks right to me. That is good. Let's hit the check mark. And so that's good for those two components. Now let's exit out of creating another fastener mate and I'm going to exit out of the isolate command so it brings everything back and now I want to put the same thing over on the front of the engine block so let's select the engine block front I'm going to hold down the control key and select the bearing out of the tree and now I'm going to choose isolate so those other two components are not visible and now I can select the bearing 
and I'm going to copy and paste in order to get it in the model. And you can use the standard Windows shortcuts of Control C and Control V. Also, if I hold down the right mouse button, here we can choose copy bearing, and then I can right click and then paste the bearing. And there it is over there. And for this one, let me get out of here, and I just want to make sure that I have this one and this part isolated. That is good. And now let's go to our fastener mate command again. And I'm going to select that edge there. And let me select this edge over here. And it places it in there. And actually, I think I've got it wrong. And so, seeing as I'm kind of new at this, let me see if I flip it. Nope. You know, I think I've just got the wrong thing. I'm just going to cancel out of here and try again. Let's do the fastener mate. I'm sure as I get more verse in here, I'll be able to figure out how to change things properly. So let's select that and then select here. There we go. That looks better. And from this menu that opens up, I can hit the check mark to get it in there. Let's cancel out of here and cancel out of there. So right now I've got five components in my assembly. I'm going to make a sub-assembly and place it in here. But before I do that, I just want to show that if you go to the right-hand side of the screen, you have a command to show the bomb table. And here is my bill of materials. Let me choose... Hmm, for some reason, I just have the items and the quantity. But that is how you can expand the bomb table uh, in and out. So right now, I want to make a new assembly uh, that I'm going to use as a sub-assembly. So let's click on the plus sign, and I will create an assembly. And here's assembly 2. I can right-click on the tab and choose rename. And this is going to be my crank assembly hit the enter key when I'm done typing and let's insert our components in here and from my current document I'm going to choose to place in here the crankshaft and let me just drop it on the screen over here as well as the flywheel and I'll drop it over there that's good let me hit the check mark and now let me reposition this component. Let me grab using my triad manipulator. Let me rotate it about over here. And let me move this component out of the way while I'm positioning. Oops. Let me left click to close that value that it wanted. Let me just drag this out over here. All right. So for placing this component at the ground, let me click here. I'm going to left drag the manipulator so it goes there and then I can right click and move to origin and then right click and choose fix and that way I've got that component grounded. Now let's put in a fastener mate and for this one I'm going to select this edge here and use a fastener mate to this one over there and that looks good. Be aware that in the little dialog box that you have for defining your mates, you have the checkbox that allow you, you to define offsets in X, Y, and Z. In addition to that, we have the ability to flip the primary axis if we want it going the other way, reorient a secondary axis, and in a moment I'll show you this solve stuff. So that is good. Let me hit the check mark. And I've got my sub-assembly created. Let me go back over to my main assembly. And I want to add that in here. So let's choose the insert command. And rather than inserting parts from a part studio, I'm going to go to the assembly option. And here's the crank assembly. It looks like it's still generating a preview. I'm just going to drop it about over here. So that is good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I've got my sub assembly listed in the model. And for placing this one, I'm going to select this component and hold down the control key and select that one. 
and then choose isolate and that way it helps me see what I want in here and this one instead of being a fastener mate I want one rotational degree of freedom so that corresponds to a revolute mate so I will click on that one and for the mate connectors oh you know what I actually want to see the bearing let me cancel out of here and yeah because I'm actually going to assemble this next to the bearing so let's see let me choose bearing and this one and isolate these two. Oh, let me exit isolate first and then select let's see I think it's this bearing and my crankshaft I'm gonna isolate these that's good that's what I want and now let's do our revolute mate and I'm going to select let's do here from that component and then move over here and there select that one over there and so there I've got the Revolute. You'll notice right now that it moved the crankshaft, but it did not move the flywheel. And that's because it's sort of like solving, or it, it's uh, just moving it right now. If you want to see the solve for the full assembly, you can hit the solve button. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this now, it moved the flywheel to the correct location and treated the crank assembly as a single unit. But that is good, so I can hit the check mark. And let's get out of the isolate. And in this way, I have created an assembly that has five different parts in it and a sub assembly. And so that is how you can initiate an assembly, insert components, and then define some of the different mates between them. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.